why his father loves him. Because he's the easiest child to love. I mean, those other brothers, they were something else, man. I don't have time to talk about all of them. But they were absolutely, boo, bad news. But he was the good one. He was a good child. So his father didn't really love him because of him. He loved him because of what he represented. And so he played the favorites and things of this nature. And so this is the environment that Joseph begins to grow up in. So then his father places a coat over him. He places this multicolored coat and he places it over his son. And it's not like my vest. It's not simply like my shirt. In this day and time, when you put on some work clothing, kind of like overalls, but when you put on work clothing, the sleeves only went so far. And the bottom only went so far, so when you had on this, these garments, you could work. So you could work, you could serve, you could work. But when you really look at that word in the Hebrew, that word conveys long sleeves. And so this particular garment he had on, it was basically announcing to the other children, he's better than you. He doesn't have to work. See, he has on those type of garments because you guys are going to do the work. He, he doesn't have to work, but that's called a dysfunctional family. When in time, we as parents, we put 50% love over here and 10% love over here and 90% love over there, every child gets how much? 100%. Which child do you, anybody have more than two or three children? Which one you love the most? Which one you love the most? Which one, it's 100%. Now I don't know how you have five children and, and 100% five times equals 100% and not 500%, but it's 100%. It's 100% love. And so he grows up in this empty environment, in this empty home, but faith propels him. And that jacket I talked about, if we get time, we'll come back to it later. But that jacket was a sign of God's grace in the midst of dysfunction. And I want you to know that faith will always cover you. That faith in his grace will always cover you in the midst of your greatest dysfunction. In the midst of your worst possible moment. Because like that train... Faith will continue to press. Faith will continue to move forward. And if you will only believe in God Almighty. Now the other thing we see about faith shining in darkness. It not only shine in an empty home through the favoritism that his father showed him. But it also shined when they put him in an empty tomb. So here it is. We have this guy and his father sends him to his death. Now that was a place where they set him where they... The brothers really destroyed that other group of people who hurt their sister. Well, the brothers was hanging out in the wrong environment of town. They were hanging out in a place, in an environment they had no business being. And what did the father do? The father sent Joseph back into that negative environment, that negative spirit. I want you to know that you got to watch people, places, and things. When you want to release faith in your life and you want God to do amazing things in your life, you got to pay close attention to the people, to the places, and to the things. I want you to know that the wrong people will take you in the wrong direction every time. So you got 10 wrong people, you got one person right. An amazing thing will happen. The nine or the 10 are not going to become right. You're going to become wrong. Because they're going to be such a powerful influence on you. The Bible says, how can we walk together except we be agreed, except we be in agreement. And so we see that his father sends him back, and all this is going to tie together in a minute. His father sends him to an to a environment with these brothers who do not like him, who are persecuting him, who are hurting him, and they said, we're going to kill him. And he shows up with grace. He shows up with this multicolored clothing on. So they begin to take that clothing off and they said, we're going to kill him. And then his older brother, who had his own trouble, said, let's not kill him. Let's just put him in this hole. And he had planned to come back and pick him back up again. But I'll tell you something about life. Our, our greatest desires, our greatest aspirations, when we're the doers, when we're our own fulfillment of our own promises, Man, there's always going to be something on the list we don't have time to get back to. 
There's always something on the list you're not going to be able to do. There's always going to be some unforeseen thing that happened that you can't even imagine. And so you, when you allow Christ to be the door, when you allow faith to be the reason for your great hope, you'll see amazing things happen. So they begin to put him in a hole. Reuben said he's going to come back. Before he can get back, the brothers sell him into slavery. Now I want you to picture him in this hole. He's in a dark environment. He's in a damp environment. He has very little light. Here he is in a grave. He's down here lower than I am now. Everybody's having all the fun up there. Everybody's life is working perfect except mine. They're laughing, they're smiling, and I'm down here. I'm alone. Can anybody identify with being lonely? I mean, I'm alone, I'm afraid, I'm scared. So here it is, a natural disaster has happened in his life. And so here we are afraid of some things that happen. I talked to a good friend of mine the other day that lives in Tornado Alley. And when I talked to him, this time he sounded a little bit different. He always says, oh, it's no big deal, no big deal. But this time, for whatever reason, I could hear a little humanity in his voice. Yeah, they say another one is coming. And I could just hear, what do you do when you live in Tornado Alley? And you've been there all your life, your business is there, your home is there, your family's there. What do you do when you live in Tornado Alley and life just kind of happens to you? What do you do? What do you do when you have genetic predispositions to certain ailments in your family? You can't leave Tornado Alley. This is the street God has placed you in life. And we all have our Tornado Alley moments. Am I right or wrong? And so what do you do? You're in this hole, you're all by yourself. What do you do? What do you do when terrorism strikes you? You know, terrorism didn't just start it. It didn't start five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Especially in America, it's been some terrorism going on for a long time. All throughout the world, different forms of terroristic threats have been going on. What do we do? How do you operate? Do you move? Where are you gonna move to? Because no matter where you go in the world, there's always gonna be someone who thinks they're God in the flesh and who thinks that they can overrule who you are, your rights. But what do you do? You're in this hole, you live on Tornado Alley, you can't move, what do you do? You have terrorists all around you. What do you do? Do you stop flying? Do you stop driving? Do you stop drinking the public water? What do you do? What do you do when the economy crashed and you didn't have anything to do with it? What do you do when you've been working a job for 20 or 25 years? There's a, another friend of mine, their family were in a family business for over 30, 40 years. And something happened and the business went under. And the sons were, of course, employed by the company. This was their livelihood and the business went under. They're angry with their parents. They're angry with the mother and the father. This great family is now torn apart. And I had an opportunity to speak with one of the sons. I said, hey, if it can happen to Kodak, why do you think it can't happen to you? Kodak was one of the largest companies in the world. I don't even know where you can find Kodak at today. Kmart was everywhere. I don't even think we have one in Houston. So, so what do you do when it's your turn for life to take you on a roller coaster ride. What do you do when you're in the bottom of a hole? What do you do when everything you try to get out doesn't work? What do you do? I'm tired of being broke, busted, and disgusted. I'm tired of not having enough money. I'm tired of not being able to get my credit right. I got it right, then I got sick. I couldn't pay the hospital bills. What do I do now? What do you do when you've been the perfect spouse but the person you were married to chose not to be the perfect one? What do you do now? What do you do when life happens to you, you're in a hole, you're all by yourself, you can't fix it? What do you do? 
What do you do when you're a part of a team and you do your part, but they don't do their part? What do you do when you're in the bottom of a hole? And I believe that if you will place Christ, and he's giving you an illustration of what happens when Christ comes in your environment. Let me make this shoot out for you. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Maybe if I turn it upside down, huh? Let's see if that, well, a little bit. And that's how it works when we do it. We get like, like a little something, but you're still in that bottle. You're still in that hole. You're still in a place you do not want to be. But I'm telling you, faith will bring you out. Faith will get you out of your circumstance. Faith will do that for yourself that you can't do. I mean, faith will produce amazing things in your life. And that's what happens when you put faith in your circumstance. That's what happens when you allow Christ to get involved in your world. All he did was drop something in there. That's all he did. And look at how it comes out. And that's what, there's greatness inside of you. There's something special inside of you. There's something significant you're to do in the earth. Listen, I want you to know that when you were born, heaven was excited because they knew the plan. They were praising God and they were worshiping God. Who is this person? Man, that's how special you are. You're that great. You're not in the bottom of a hole. You can get out of that hole that you're in. Anybody in a financial hole? Anybody unemployed? Anybody have a relationship hole? Anybody have, I don't know my purpose. Some people are stuck in a self-pity party hole. What do I do? I'm in a hole. How do I get out of this town? I want you to know that faith is an amazing force in your life. It will shine in the midst of the most darkest moment. It was faith that covered Joseph when he was in an empty home. It was faith that allowed him to get up out of that hole when he couldn't get himself out. God sent some traitors, but he sent some grace. I want you to know you're going to meet some strange people this week. Now I say this stuff, I don't know if y'all listen or not. But listen, you're going to meet some strange people this week. And listen, it happens every week, Jackie, you just don't know it. But you're going to meet some strange people this week, Orlando. And when you meet these people, some of them God sent there. Now all you have to do is be true to who you are and where you are. See, sometimes we put on the air and we try to act like faith and we try to present faith. And sometimes you just got to be truthful about where you are, what stage you're in. Because when you tell the truth of the vision, the other person is going to catch the vision and something amazing is going to happen in their life. Amen. Now, next thing I want you to know.